Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. When you think about the midheaven, think about you standing on top of a hill and everyone is looking up at you. Everyone can see you. And you standing up on top of this hill is basically you standing up there with all your gifts, your talents, and what you will be known for in this life. So the midheaven in your natal chart talks about your legacy. It's like if you were to win an award for basically being known for something, your success, your accomplishments, it will be whatever sign is on the cusp of your midheaven. You can find the midheaven where the 10th house is. And the 10th house is ruled by Capricorn and Capricorn rules over Saturn. So this says that, you know, wherever Saturn energy is in our natal chart talks about karma. And I also want to point out the fact that Capricorn is a cardinal energy. So when I think about karma and cardinal energy, I think about the fact that, you know, for some of us, it may take us a long time to realizing who we are truly are and what we are here to do because for a very long time we might identify with careers and goals that really are connected to our parents our guardians our loved ones and that's where the karma comes in because i believe that karma is something that is taught like when we are children we are taught you know what good is what bad is and we are also taught that good behavior is rewarded and bad behavior is punished so for a while based on our guardians caregivers or whatnot we are punished and rewarded for our good and bad behavior and even fresh out the womb you can feel what is good and bad based on the energy that is being projected back at you so when we get to a certain age we punish and reward ourselves so for a while we might think that i am meant to pursue this career or this field and you know say you're pursuing the thing that you really want to pursue like say for example myself like i want to i am pursuing what i want to pursue like talking to you guys about what i'm talking to you guys about like being a coach a motivator and ha you having to do with the occult metaphysics and the unknown because i use all of that information to understand myself better it all comes back down to self-awareness but for a while because of the whole karma energy me being taught what's wrong or right I used to think that, you know, when I was pursuing this that I'm doing now and things weren't going my way, I used to think, well, maybe God is not happy with me because this isn't something that's acceptable, acceptable because I was raised religious, you know, so for a while. I would throw away tarot cards. I will buy them and then feel like I'm doing something wrong and then toss them in the trash to where I'm completely comfortable because I understand. So because of that karma energy here where is where the cardinal energy will kick in. And cardinal energy is not mutable energy, you know, that flexes from one familiar thing to the next. Cardinal energy is where we go from one extreme to the next. So when it comes to a lot of us, like for a while, you might go from one extreme to the next when it comes to career. And that's actually a good thing because you're not settling. That's a sign that that's not something you're interested in. I always like to look at procrastination as a form of guidance because we procrastinate for one or two reasons. We procrastinate because we don't believe we have what it takes or we are or we're not interested and the not interested part is good because we get to move that thing out of the way but the not having what it takes part it's like once we get to that like i feel like that's a great thing it's like it's like something is wrong with your car and you don't know what's wrong like that's a headache but once you figure out what's wrong even if it's super expensive at least now you know what you're saving towards or now you know what to focus the energy on so once we realize that 
you know, it's a lack of confidence why we're not pursuing this thing, you know, then we can start getting to the root of what we're thinking, what we're feeling, why we're lacking that confidence. Because wherever Saturn energy is, there's going to be a level of, um, like, I don't want to say depression, but there's going to be a level of pressure because Saturn brings pressure like observe the capricorns that you know and even aquarius people or people with their sun conjuncting saturn like it might make them seem cold and detached and things like that but they're really in their head about the fact that they are not performing as good as they should so having whatever sign you have in the 10th house in the midheaven you will feel a level of insecurity when it comes to that energy. Like it's going to take you time to grow into that energy because Saturn energy, like Capricorn energy, like if you're friends with the Capricorn and you guys are growing as time go by, like it only gets better in time. Like same with Aquarian energy, like once they are comfortable with you and they're able to open and be themselves with you, you don't see that detached energy where they're running off, coming and going. They're pretty consistent once they are able to like take the mask off and be themselves the midheaven is also known as the medium kali and right below it is the ic the Im imam kali i don't know if i'm saying it properly but basically the midheaven is the 10th house and right below that is the fourth house that i see and i like to look at the fourth house energy as a underlying moon energy because the fourth house is ruled by cancer and the moon rules over cancer so whatever sign is in your fourth house is going to give a underlying moon energy that sign is going to also give an idea of what your nurture or mother figure was like, what it's like in your household. And at the same time, like, what are you like when you are comfortable with people? The same way how our moon position is something that we show to people who we feel comfortable with. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because whatever is in the fourth house shows what we are comfortable with. And it's that level of comfort with that thing in the fourth house that will create the push and pull, the opposition when it comes to whatever is sitting in your 10th house. So with me mentioning karma and us having a hard time deciding what, what path to go to because maybe we're holding on to an idea that fits with what the people who raised us, who loved us, thought would be best for us. A pull also comes from what's sitting in the fourth house because that energy comes natural to us because that's who we are in the comfort of our own home with the people who we're safe with and comfortable with where whatever is in the 10th house, like that's us coming out on the world stage. And for most of us, that's not something that we would be comfortable with normally. So say, for example, you have cancer in your fourth house and you have Capricorn in the 10th house. So what comes natural to you, what you're comfortable with is being a nurturer, you know, your privacy, your security. And that is going to make it hard for you to put yourself out there with the Capricorn energy and stand on top and be a boss, be in charge, be that supervisor, be the one who is responsible for everyone else, responsible for the community and different things like that. Because cancer energy is an energy that needs to feel safe. So the fear of, you know, being out there where you could be criticized and picked apart will stop you from wanting to move to the top of the mountain and put yourself out there and be that CEO and boss up and take on that Capricorn role. So whatever is in the fourth house, the level of comfort we have with that placement, that's going to create that pull and make it a little bit more challenging for us to step into our true power and move forward with our legacy. So yeah, with the um, the whatever sign you have in the mid heaven, you will experience a level of pressure or challenge. But like I said, Saturn energy is like fine wine. As it ages, it only gets better. So whatever you have in the mid heaven cusp. It's like as time goes by, you will only get better at this. And if you are sure that, you know, you want to dedicate to whatever this is, like it's something that you can be known for, that you can 
achieve major success in this life. And of course, other placements in your natal chart play a major part, you know, on how to really understand this energy or whatnot. But for the most part, wherever, whatever is in the midheaven in your 10th house, that's your legacy. That's something that you will be known for in this life. Of course, you want to combine other energies within your chart to understand it better, but it will give you a good understanding. I'll give you an example with my chart. Like I have Gemini in the 10th house, you know, so having Gemini in the 10th house, I will be known for communication. I will probably be also known for working with my hands because Gemini rules the hands. That's something that I do also. I'll be known for multiple things, which I do multiple things. Like I have a degree in fashion. I could sew and create things. I'm a hairstylist. Like I do numerology, astrology, tarot. So Gemini energy is known for doing a couple things. Having my son and a stellium in Scorpio, you know, I am here communicating through the media you know, and social media, which is Gemini energy, but I'm communicating about scorpionic occult type things where I also have Mercury conjuncting my sun with other planets in Scorpio. So you see how I'm piecing it together. But the main thing is, yes, the Gemini energy in the 10th house, I will be known for, you know, communication and doing multiple things, but then the other placements will show how I will go about doing them and also tell other stories. But just to give you an idea, so yes, whatever is in your 10th house will show you your legacy, what you will be known for in this life, how you will stand up on top of the mountain where everyone can see you and recognize you for this thing. If you are still here with me, please drop me a purple heart in the comment box below to let me know that you are still here. You wrote it out to the end. I would love to hear from you and hear where, what sign is in your 10th house cusp, what's in your midheaven. Share your experience with this placement with me and others in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.